<clears throat> attending. <clears throat> okay. Yep, I got it. Um, so, sorry, so we are now recording, and my apologies that we started that late. Thanks for the mind. For, for the record, for the record, the minutes were approved at 9.10. Thank you, Tom. And for the record, the minutes are the record of the meeting, not the recording. Correct. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, all right. So we were, our last comment was that we are um, assuming or hoping that the executives will be able to stay for the entire meeting. We'll certainly encourage them to do so. Um, so it may be when we get some dates from Paul, I'll, I'll do a doodle poll for Paul and the executives. Um, so Tom, I'll be getting that to you as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's see what else. So is there anything else on CCA? I mean, that's kind of the big next step. Okay. All right, then moving on. So um, Adele, you had asked about um, putting these two legislative bills on the on the docket for today. So yeah, the, I'll hand it over to you. To me, what's really important about these bills is number one, <laughs> that Roy is the sole sponsor of the House bill which um, it, it amazes me because Roy always says he can't sign on to things because uh, he's the speaker. But anyway, um, it, it, uh, what the, good, the good things in the bills are that um, it provides deadlines for how fast DPU has to act on um, CCA applications. But also it includes language on line 11 and 12 that could be interpreted to mean that um, CCAs can do other things besides just buy recs. And that really intrigues me. So um, anyway, so I'm uh, hoping that um, our municipalities can officially go on record as endorsing these bills, um, can therefore write to our legislators um, saying that. Um, and also that we might uh, um, look for other opportunities to support the bills. That's it, thank you. Sure. All right. Um, anybody else? Oh, Darcy, go ahead. I just am wondering what, what would this group have as a procedure to get our municipalities to do that um would we have to go uh could we could we write a letter to our legislative bodies uh, or whatever the process is seeks endorsers or whatever um how would we go about doing it other than sending i mean we can always send a letter supporting it to the legislature from this group, but we could also get our legislative bodies to do it. You mean the legislative reps for our region that with like um, Hummerford and some of those? Yeah, uh, well, what I, what I mean plays. is we, we could go to our legislative, to our city council and town council and select board with like a resolution that our communities support this and and you know they always say the resolutions always say we support this bill um and we resolve to send our expression of support to all of our local reps the speaker of the house and the senate president and governor and everyone else um so yeah i've seen many of those resolutions just supporting specific legislation so in Northampton, we might bring it to the NESC for endorsement before the city council endorses. Right, that would help. That would be, that's what occurs to me anyway. I don't know what Carolyn thinks about that. Um, I yeah, I mean, that seems like the, the right path, um, but it doesn't, 
um, preclude other constituent groups from contacting directly their legislative reps is all I'm uh, sort of adding to the mix in that so that, you know, um, your, um, your group could go directly to um, the legislative delegation in Western Mass and say, you know, separate from what the communities are doing, we also are on board. Right. I think that um, having each municipality pass a resolution is a really good way. And I think that um, there will be a move to do that across the state. And then, you know, that's a powerful statement. You know, we have, you know, a hundred municipalities who have asked for this or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. um, Andra, would you encourage the ECAC to um, yeah. pen something to Paul at yeah, the council? Yeah, that, that is uh, actually on my legislative list that we didn't get to at the last meeting. Okay. All right. So, all right. So we're already sort of moving in that direction anyway, which is good. Um, Tom, what about you? Is there, could you work with your energy group to get something? Absolutely. Okay. Great. Um, are we, uh, nothing is impossible to the person who doesn't have to write the first draft. I, I think if there was a, uh, and a template that could be submitted, I, I'm, that, that would make it easier. But, um, I, I like what you're saying, Andrew, I'm totally behind the idea and happy to get tell them to, uh, get behind it as well. Adele, are um, you aware of any? templates that are out there or any campaign or anything? Um, not yet, um, but I will look. But I'm traveling, so it, it's going to be hit or miss for a while. I'll do my best. Um, so you reminded me, Adele, that we could, um, you know, uh, Energy and Sustainability Commission meets next week. I haven't done the agenda yet. It needs to be posted by this afternoon at four. So. Um, I could put um, an item on the agenda as sort of a, a, a draft council resolution or a, or a discussion of a possible draft resolution that goes to city council for the Tuesday meeting. And then the commission could discuss it and determine, you know, it could be sort of um, submitted to the mayor um, with uh, support by the Energy and Sustainability Commission. Great. That's good. Um, do we need to have a draft resolution before um, the meeting on Tuesday? Uh, and it's not necessary. It probably makes um, sense, but I can post it on the agenda without having the draft. So the draft can come later. Thanks. Roy's office might have something. I am. Yeah, betting. I mean, we have so many resolutions. It's really a matter of just taking the format and yeah. plugging in why you think this is a good idea, taking right. pieces of the of the legislation. Yeah, Andrew, were you about to say something? Uh, I'm, I'm betting that the building electrification um, group is already on this. So. Yeah. Um, if you're still on that, do you want to ask them if they have it? I know that no. network. Yeah, well, it's I'll, very active. I'll, I'll, I'll check. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you, yeah, if you find something, then you can just forward it to me and, or just to the whole group is fine. Andrew, do you, are you saying that they're working on a resolution specifically on this? Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was already language for draft resolutions. So I'll, I'll find out. Great. OK, great. That's awesome. All right. And you can just let us all or let me know or send it out to everyone if you get it. That'd be great. Thanks. Um, anything else? Sounds like we're all on board about having a re resolution go before our various uh, legislative boards. So um, and uh, let's see. So the next agenda item we have is the an update on the um, Amherst Solar Assessment events. Um, just as a 
point of interest, Amherst did a community-wide um, solar assessment, and we have uh, three opportunities for the public to um, one, get information first through a Zoom meeting, which is being held on Monday, uh, this coming Monday, the 13th at 7 p.m. And it'll just be a presentation by our consultant, GZA, Geo Environmental Inc., um, who did the, the solar assessment. So they'll sort of talk about that process and, and the resulting map that came from that. And then um, there'll be two opportunities for our community to engage at the Jones Library. So we're going to have an event on uh, mm -hmm. Saturday, March 18th from noon to two. And then again at the Jones Library on Thursday, March 23rd, that will be from six to 8 p.m. And they're gonna be interactive workshops where people can come in, there'll be stations set up and people can just go around the room and sort of give their opinion on the solar mapping or on solar in general. And it's gonna be um, sort of multiple different formats of how they can do that. Some will be like a poll, put a dot here, others will be like through pictures. Um, so the idea is that it's a safe space. People can come and go, it's self-paced. Uh, it's not gonna be a big presentation at either of those workshops, but it'll be an opportunity for people to safely in a safe space, give their opinions. And there'll be ways for people to sort of express those even who might have some um, English literacy challenges, we'll have some interpretation available. So we'll also have, um, children's activities. I think one of them is to make a sundial. So um, we have some fun activities for, for kids happening at that event as well. And also there'll be some food available for people. So um, I know that's very Amherst specific, but you know, for the benefit of people who might be um, watching this later, I just wanted to make sure we got that out there. So um, the importance for that too, really, and for the, for certainly us is that um, in identifying where solar goes as we move the CCA forward, this gives us an opportunity to sort of identify where is solar the most feasible remaining in town. So that's a, a good uh, base map. It's a good place to start. So any um, general comments? Well, that raises the question of the JPE because it's the JPE that would <coughs> actually work on a solar array. So um, I'm assuming that you all received the email that I sent, and um, I, I don't know what, if there is any follow-up uh, about your meeting with the chief executives of the various communities. Not yet. I think, um, I think we want to make sure we just get this CCA started right now and get that moving. And as soon as we can sort of get that like public session over, I think we'll, you know, and, and that's sort of moving forward with the application, we'll be able to have more time to devote to the JPE. But I think we need to just sort of focus on getting the CCA out right now. I, I That's at least my opinion. Carolyn or Tom, you can jump in. But we're not giving up on the JPE. It's just that we need to get this going. It's, we really want to make sure it's, it's launched sooner than later. Carolyn or Tom? I, I will, uh, Carolyn, you can please go ahead. No, I mean, I, I agree. I think that we just, um, this is a key component. We can't, I mean, the JPE can't do anything really until aggregation is completed, um, you know, uh, officially um, other than organizing. So that organizing can take place, you know, it doesn't have to be immediate. My earbuds just went dead. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I really appreciate the, the work put into the letter. Um, first, um, before I comment too much on that, I would like to get the dates and the invite for the Zoom on Monday night and share that with some of the Energy Committee people. I think, uh, you know, like Ad um, Adele, you pointed out that this legislation creates opportunities to do things beyond buying RECs, SRECs, and I think knowing where the parcels are, knowing that we've got this new Inflation Reduction Act, which has all kinds, of, like the driving force of solar finance are tax credits, like it or not. Um, and municipalities, government, schools, they, they're just not tax paying entities. So they're forced to go into deals. And this new IRA bill creates ways to uh, trade the tax credits so that projects can happen, people who have tax appetite. So I'm uh, 
liking the legislation and what what it may offer i do have to read on it more but i think it's a great idea to get it supported at the county level or at the municipality level um i think that if we spend time on the jpe um we slow ourselves down on getting into the queue to get approved by the dpu uh, with or without this legislation so i'm both an advocate for staying the course um, but not giving up the the goal. And part of what I don't fully understand is I, I, there are financial commitments. Um, I, I don't fully understand where the $39,000, if it's already spent, if it's there. I think that that's, I think it's, at least for me, um, would be a valuable discussion to understand if any of that money is available to start a staff person. Um, but be, beyond that, I I think it's really important to get this thing going with the construct that we already have, given how difficult it is to get this thing going. Are you talking, referring, when you say get this thing going, are you referring to the CCA? I sure am. Okay. I <laughs> just want to be clear. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, okay. And I think, you know, just from from me, totally on board about continuing in the course with the JPE. It's just you know, we want to get the CCA going because that's such a key thing. So that's kind of the big focus right now. Um, Tom, when you say you wanted dates for the Zoom meeting on Monday night, were you saying you want the dates for the community one meeting with Paul Gromer? Or are you talking about Amherst's meeting no, that I, they're doing I mean, Monday night? The Amherst meeting. Oh, yeah. okay, sure. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, so that, that the, the dates for the members to engage are later in the month but this is um i can send you the link to the to the zoom meeting or the to the posting i'm sorry it's in our community calendar but i'll i'll send it to everybody so you can have the information if people want to log on and gza presentation we're talking about right correct Good. correct yeah it, it sounds great mm -hmm. yeah and um so they're also so i'm really yeah i really like how the community engagement piece is happening too. Um, I feel like it's very, you know, there's multiple ways for people to get comments. They can go to the town has um, Engage Amherst, uh, which is a website that people can go and leave comments. So they're going to get comments that way. Um, you know, doing stuff through the um, through the two Jones Library events. Plus, we're going to also have a, a survey that's going out that GZA worked on with input from our ECAC and our Solar Bylaw Working Group. So there's multiple ways that people can get some feedback. So um, there'll be a report that they're going to provide. So in addition to that community engagement piece and the development of the mapping tool, um, at the end, there'll be a report where they're going to put all of this together with all the community feedback. So we also have some general sense of where the community sort of lies on where they would like to see solar, because you may or may not know about the Shootsbury Road project that straddles Amherst and Shootsbury, which has been quite controversial. Um, and no solar bylaw is going to address that right now because it won't be in place in time. I think that project is kind of moving ahead. Um, so our legislation for the or zoning legislation won't be ready by the time that goes through. Um, but for future development, it will sort of address uh, the solar bylaw will address um, large scale ground mounted solar. So uh, I think people have a lot of interest in that right now. So, um, OK, I'll send a link to that meeting to the community calendar. Sorry, I'm just taking notes. I realized I didn't ask anybody to take minutes. So I guess, oh, um, are you? Oh, okay, great. Thank you, Darcy. Um, okay, let's see what else. Um, so we have one member of the public. Would you like to make a comment or ask a question of the group? I can, if you raise your hand, I can unmute you. Okay, um, thank you for joining us, but um, fine, uh, no comment from the public. And so Darcy, go ahead. I just, um, on on the JPE issue, can we schedule another JPE meeting? Because, and I know it, it may not be able to be in March because we have so much going with the public comment and so on, but um, 
I, you know, I would like us to talk further about some of the issues that we brought up in the letter and, um, and to try to see if we can get a firm commitment that we are moving forward with the JPE, um, which I do generally hear from you all. But, yeah, um, I, yeah, I think we're pretty solid that we're moving forward with it. And Paul, like, I know I can just tell you right now that Paul, you know, we're, we're moving it forward. Um, when we talked about moving forward with the CCA under the MOU instead, his first response was yes. And then it gives time to work on the JPE while that is, you know, while that's being reviewed by the DPU. So I, there's a full, I know there's a full commitment from I, Amherst I at least. Um, at our last meeting, we left with the commitment to have a meeting with the chief executives about it, remember? Um, and so mm -hmm. I'm just wondering what the status of that is. That was more about which community is going to take the lead, right? Because you all were, we had a discussion. Amherst had said we were going to take the lead. Then we said there was discussion about you all were sort of supporting the idea that Northampton take the lead because they'll have more available staff. It kind of went around a little bit. And I think what we ended up was saying was that really we can't make the decision in terms of who's taking the lead. It's got to be the executives. I don't want to necessarily rehash that last meeting, but um, I think how we left it was that we would meet with the executives, but I, we've had other, a few other things come up that need to be addressed. And I think that's just going to have to just wait until we, um, get the CCA meeting forward uh, and we sort of have that happen and then we can focus on the JPE. I, I just want to make it clear that we, we have never been proposing that we slow down the CCA process. We just want uh, the uh, JPE to be attended to um, as soon as the um, CCA is submitted. Right, and it will be. When we get it submitted and we know that's in the works, then we have the time that sort of frees up some of that time to be able to focus on the JPE more. Yeah, and one other thing is that we would like, once we've we've gotten the CCA taken care of, um, maybe in April to have on one of our first agendas, maybe for the JPE committee, um, a presentation by local energy advocates, just because at least I am feeling a little disconnected. You know, we set it up to support this effort, and I think we're a little disconnected with each other. And I would love to be able to provide a presentation just to show you all um, the work that we've done so far and and our aspirations for this whole project. So if we could if we could do that, that would be great. I think that's a great idea. So, but yeah, we can schedule something for April. I think that's a more reasonable time frame for us right now. We've got some other things going on that we're dealing with too. So, um, <laughs> you know, so it's just a lot. So like, we're, like right me, for me right now, it's just like, what is the most pressing need right, right in this moment? And for me right now, that's CCA. And so JPE, I feel like, it, it's going to happen. It's just that, you know, we have to sort of get this piece done. And I really feel like I want to give it my full attention and I don't want to be, you know, distracted by trying to do that at the same time right now. I feel like this is going to, you know, this is going to be a really big effort, really, because we're going to have to do some community. We'll be doing community engagement. I mean, as much as Paul Gromer and his team will be doing it, it's going to involve staff helping with that too, obviously. Adele. So um, part of this whole discussion is about the JPE staffing. And I thought that was part of the conversation that you all were going to have with the chief executives was about financing and staffing. It's about all of it, but right. But the, but the staffing piece, mm -hmm. even if we use the 39,000 for staffing, that's an admin support person. But there's also all the other things that we talked about, which is the bookkeeping, and the legal piece and those other things. And the 39,000 is not gonna cover everything. So we're trying, what it means is until there's something coming in from the CCA, if we're allowed at some point to do that, um, 
it means that one of the communities is going to have to have whatever existing accounting staff they have create the accounts and do some of that piece. So that's where the executives need to sort of iron that out. Who's doing what? Where is this going to sit temporarily until we get that more established? So that's the conversations that need to happen. It involves other staff here. So um, again, you know, we need to let them sort of determine who is more equipped to be able to handle that at this time, temp you know, in the interim. Understood. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other comments about any of the above items we've addressed so far or anything anyone wants to announce or like to see on a future agenda? You know, I think for me, um, just in the context, I, I do really appreciate the, the letter that you guys put together. Um, and I, I am not clear, like, I agree with you, Stephanie, that those costs are those activities and costs are real um i don't know I, i'm not clear on how quickly we would gobble up the 39k and if that would all go to the bookkeeping and legal and i know we put that budget together when chris was here um but i think if we can figure out a way to start to narrow down what our actual near-term costs are and if there's nothing left over then there's nothing left over um i also it feels like it feels like this could be bigger than we we had anticipated. I mean, it's, you know, what's the minimum amount of money we need to get somebody on board, and uh, and then that person's going to have to do the work to pay for themselves, um, which is always the way with government and not for profit activities, in my experience. I, I mean, absent some kind of line item in the budget process, you know, you've got to come up with your own funding, um, so. And and again, going back to like trying to get ourselves started with the CCA, um, I think we're still going to ask for an adder. So as far as revenue streams to support this, I, I, I'm just kind of looping back that keeping on the track that we're on um, will um, get us to the point where we can start generating, I think, generating a little bit of income through the adder, if it's a tenth of a penny or whatever it is. Uh, and and then um, uh, well, I guess that's really the big thing, you know. Beyond that, um, I don't know. Like, um, I was thinking that we had, and when I say we, I basically mean Amherst and Northampton. <laughs> um, and I want to part of it is I want to go back to the Pelham board and to the Energy Committee and find out, like, is there anything there at all? And you know, I, well, I guess I'll end with this. Um, if we were to um, uh, take your request, Adele and Andra and Darcy, um, how much money would I be, you know, and your request is, let's get this thing started. There's already a financial commitment that's been outlined. Um, let's get the executives to sign off on it. I don't know. I know we came up with a number which was like ridiculously small for Pelham, a few hundred dollars, as I recall. Is that still the number? And and just how to frame all that is uh, like where I would like to see us go with the next conversation. And that's what we will be working towards in April. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, absolutely. Because everything you said is exactly what, you know, those are all the questions really, right, that we have that we need to sort of address. And I think I just, I mean, for me, I just to give it the sort of mental focus and space that it needs, I want to really be able to like just, you know, um, work on that and focus on those questions and sort of help with figuring them out, right, together. Um, Absolutely. So I think, again, after we get this thing launched, we'll be able to really like have, I, I just, it's just going to feel good to have one thing sort of in the pipeline done so that we can focus on the next thing. Like, you know, sort of the simultaneous track was a little confusing even with the meetings it was getting a little sort of disjointed yeah. i think so we've we've got our we've got our plan we're going to have a meeting in april and we'll sort of pick it up then but right now until then we're going to focus on the cca and can we can we ask paul gromer um you know he had originally been very clear that he thought it would be more advantageous for us to have the jpe 
submitted along with the CCA if that's what we were eventually going to do. Yeah, we could you ask change them, that, right? He said, Go ahead. He, well, <laughs> I think I'm not sure he uh, has a different opinion, but he um, could we ask him the question, you know, if our if our CCA application is is projected to be in a queue for, you know, what, we don't know how long now, but maybe a year. If we, you know, if we in June or July of this year can get the JPE done or sometime within yep. the near future. Yeah, he'll amend it. So I actually, so I did, so I did actually address this yeah. at, at, at the last meeting that what Paul said was, cause we did ask him specifically that question. So the scenario is he can submit under the MOU. He thinks it's fine to submit under the MOU. Um, he, he said the only the only thing would be that while it's in the queue, if we complete the JPE, he could request an administrative amendment to the um, to the application. So they would amend the application to reflect the existence of the JPE. So that could happen while it's in process. So there is there is a pathway there. And then if um, if the JPE gets approved or a is created and formed after the CCA goes through its whole approval process, then what they would do is submit um, um, a, a change to the to the CCA. And again, it would be a shorter process because everything has already sort of gone through the works. It's just basically amending that um, final approval. And right. he said that will take less time. So, so he he doesn't. It's certainly easier to have it, but he didn't say it's impossible or that he he felt it was fine. I think he feels like it's. I, I think he just wants to get it moving. So I think he was fine to go forward with the MOU. He doesn't think it's going to be. I don't think he thinks it's going to be a problem. So a question would be like, do we do we want to shoot to try to to get it done before it's actually in front of the DPU um, or? No, it doesn't I, matter. I, it doesn't matter. He says it doesn't matter at what point you do it. You can do it after the CCA is approved by DPU. You can start the CCA, then do a minor amendment and get your JPE assigned or uh, attached to that. There's absolutely no there's no difference um, what time you do it. And, and what Paul did was because um, Cape Light Compact actually submitted theirs to the DPU under an MOU initially, um, he took their initial MOU and compared ours to theirs. And he said there are some differences, but he that's why he thought it was fine to go forward with the MOU because he didn't see anything that would um, that would necessarily create any kind of a a problem for moving ours forward. There were some language differences, but nothing significant enough that um, it couldn't move forward under the MOU. So it doesn't matter when we have the JPE formed. Right, it's a question of what we want to shoot for and do we want to get it done as soon as possible? Um, so anyway, I guess that's a conversation for April, but uh, obviously we would like to have it done sooner. Duly noted. <laughs> um, okay. So anything else? So what about our agenda? So I guess, I mean, the next, the agenda for this group uh, will just be sort of our um, continuation with our next steps. I think because we're going to want to get this um, meeting happening in March, I don't want to have meetings just for meetings sake. <laughs> um, I'd like to like, if, if we just need to know, like, this is the date that our executives are available. This is the date Paul Gromer's available. I could just basically share that information via email so that we can move forward with scheduling it rather than having to have a meeting to have all the conversations about the same thing again. So let me just um, reach out to Paul. Um, Carolyn, Tom, and I will reach out to our executives and see when we get Paul's dates, what works for them um, with a doodle poll. And then we can um, work on getting the meeting scheduled for March. 
Okay. Sounds right. And we're still on time because we said March. We did say we were going to do it in March. So we're not, you know, we haven't like, you know, uh, shifted our time frame for this. So. Okay. Well, and either way, the, the month, you know, there has to be a month public comment period. So we're going into April, no matter what, for a public right. comment. So even if we have our public Zoom meeting in April, if we've set the date, say March 20th, it has to go to April 20th. So we have that whole yeah. time within which we can schedule that meeting. Yeah, I have a question about the website. Do we get a sneak preview? Um, when does that launch? Uh, we can ask. I'll ask because I don't know. I would imagine that has to be in place, though, when we open the public comment period. That's yes. what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would be nice to have that uh, link for pu publicizing the um, event as well. Uh, the event have a website. Yeah, all the materials I think need to be available when we do that. When we open the public comment period, all the materials need to be accessible. So they're going to have to be, including the website. Um, okay. I, I don't know about the preview um, given the time frame, but I can certainly ask. I mean, maybe they can just send us a link to the, you know, to the draft site. Yeah, or that would be good. I I don't want to have the executive seeing it on the night of the public Zoom meeting. That's all. That's how I was saying earlier. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I am making a note. All right. Anything else? All right. Then um, I think for this group, we'll sort of hold off on scheduling our next meeting for right now. And I'll like maybe let's just get through this, these three weeks with, you know, scheduling this public event and then we can uh, schedule something in early April. Does that sound okay to folks? Yes. Okay. And I'll send out a, you know, a poll or something. I'll just, or I'll just send an email asking when people can meet. I'm doing a lot of traveling in the last half of April, just for what it's worth. Okay. So no, that's good to know. Be good. Yeah. Okay. I'm making a note to myself. Okay. All right. Great. Well, thank you all so much. It's exciting. I mean, it's really exciting that we're at least moving the, the CCA forward soon. So, and we're scheduling the public meeting. That's very, that's big. So, all right, everyone. Thank you all. Yep. Have a great, have a great day and a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Take care. Bye.